What's up guys, first of all, if this is windy, I'm sorry. I didn't bring my mics. I did not expect it to be windy. But we're gonna talk about what I've done, my decisions, and why I made the decisions, and why people don't understand. Why people are saying that I've made the biggest mistake that I could make, but yet I'm seeing different results. There's one reason for that, and one reason only. And I tell you guys all the time how to avoid this, and how to be in my position and not in theirs. Now I am no better than anybody else. Except, I do something that others refuse to do. It's called research. So, I did not get out of car hauling forever. That's not what I did, nor is that what I'm doing. But I did get out of car hauling at the moment because I am an opportunistic eater, winner business person just overall person in general I take advantage of opportunities and when I see an opportunity like the one in front of us today I'm going to jump on it when I see other business owners scared for political reasons scared because they don't know scared because they're listening to other people and those other people live in the past those other people think something is dead because it was dead before they don't understand the drive van has got CPR drive van rates right now through the roof that's why I'm no longer doing power only. I'm not doing power only. I'm not running Amazon. When a broker told me ever since Amazon started their own thing and started needing all of these power only units, he said, I can't find a trailer. Wait, excuse me? I can't find a truck with a trailer to move my loads. Okay? Mental note. Heard that three times. Three different brokers heard the same thing. So what should I do? Well, I made a phone call. Talked to a buddy. She pulled, pulled trail. I went and I pulled a reefer unit. Without the reefer. It's an old reefer used as a dry van now, right? I pulled that for a month. Now, mind you, that unit, that trailer, is very, very restrictive because, because of what it is and what it does and what it doesn't have, okay? So that trailer is smaller inside, okay? The door opening is smaller. The floor is not flat. That's a lot against it. And now you can't just go on a regular drive van load board and get loads for it. You have to go on a drive van slash reefer load board, which is a, for every five to seven loads on a drive van board, there's one on a reefer drive band board. And if I made $20,000 on 7,000 miles in one month with a restricted trailer, you better bet your bottom dollar. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm gonna buy it. And I'm gonna switch. And it's gonna pay for itself. And it's gonna work. It ain't gonna last forever. 
neither does anything else. Nothing lasts forever. I tell you guys that. You can't be a hot shot car hauler forever. You can, but stagnant complacency. You can't be a nothing forever. You know what I mean? Like, you have to better yourself. Look for opportunities. You're either the vulture or you're the deer. Or the raccoon. Whichever the business has eaten up that day, the vultures will come to get. So, I say that to say, judge me all you want. Judge anybody you want. But your judgmental ways may be costing you a lot of money. Because for every five that jump out, somebody's got to pick up the pace, you know. And cars are, I, I love cars. I'm still a car holder by heart. But I'm not going to run cars at 275 $3 a mile work like a dog crazy hours extra miles extra abuse when I could do the same thing on a dry van you know what I mean and make my money so guys you, you don't have to be one of anything I know you said well hot shot you told us you're right I did you're right I did told you to f- f- focus on one and learn the industry learn the market and I did that and I'm still only focused on one I keep my open my eyes open to my surroundings but I only focus on one Right now it's dry bones. Tomorrow it may be reefer. Summer it may be flatbed. It may be cars. Who knows? You know, and with my switch to dry bed for the moment, I've learned that if you can logistically master car hauling, the rest of it's a breeze. It's a breeze. Because I don't have partials now. I have a couple picks and drops. I don't have many. So I think I've done one all month. I'm a multiple stopper. There's a video coming up for that. And I paid me uh, $3,300 on 800 miles. Pretty good for me, I think. So guys don't go by the stereotype don't go by what people think and what they say you go by what you see if it makes sense to you that's all that matters because I've got this saying what you eat don't make me shit and what that means is no matter what you do it doesn't really affect me if you eat corn I'm not going to put corn if you go run a $10 a mile load I'm not going to make $10 a mile so and that goes the same way what I do don't make you poop so just remember that and when you see me making moves, don't follow me without your proper research. Because uh, I've seen a lot of people, as soon as I moved to power only, they wanted to move to power only. Which is fine. Um, it's a big deal. But, in my opinion, I got railroaded by doing that power only. Um, there may be a video coming up on why and how. But, it is what it is. You know, I ran it a couple weeks. I made decent money. I didn't like the outcome of the system, so... Go to the next one. But, 
So guys, keep your eyes open. Watch the industry, watch the market. And if you watch the news, you'll see I'm not the only one. Look at the stock market right now. That's called opportunistic. We the people. So it is. That shows you, if we come together, we can win. And that's in trucking too. So, if you're all ready, I've been ready. Somebody made a comment, hot shot, one, one truck, five trucks, one broker, ten brokers, can't make a difference in the industry. You're looking at the wrong industry, son. Because I'm going to tell you what, if there's a hundred of us in the same area that won't pull for a certain rate, rate's going to go up. You know, yeah, the market moves on supply and demand. But there's a reason that you look on the car load board, they'll give you a price. Why won't freight give you a price? Who let that happen? You put a you put it on the car or uh, central or anywhere, a car with no price, you know you're getting a call. Hey, you ain't even allowed to put it in there with no price. But somewhere along the line that came acceptable in freight. But you're gonna tell me the trucks and the drivers don't have control of the market? They're doing cars. So like, share, subscribe, hit that ding ding, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.